Today I'm going to show you the Purex process on a lab scale. What does Purex stand for? Plutonium Uranium Recovery by Extraction. Don't get your hopes up, what I'm doing here is more like the Urex process. This process is typically known in the context of nuclear fuel reprocessing. In Germany that isn't done, but in England for example, it's done in cellar field. When a fuel rod is used, a lot of things happen simultaneously. Let's assume a fuel with an enrichment level of 3.3% uranium-235 and then 96.7% uranium-238. After burn up, not all the 3.3% of uranium-235 was fissioned, more like 70%. This means we still have 0.9% uranium-235 and during this time part of the uranium-238 through neutron capture i.e. an N-gamma reaction and subsequent beta decays becomes plutonium-239 and it continues from there but that's not topic for today's video. So initially we had 3.3% uranium-235, 96.7% uranium-238 and afterwards we have less uranium-235, about half a percent of plutonium-239, other transuranics and a bunch of fission products. Now in the context of the Purex process, the following is done. The fuel rods are chopped by a very powerful hydraulic shear and fall into hot concentrated nitric acid. Everything dissolves in it. Then a mixture of 70% kerosene and 30% TBP is added. Why? Well, kerosene is a very cheap non-polar solvent in the industry and non-polar things don't dissolve in nitric acid. TBP or tri-n-butyl phosphate, as its structure suggests, has a non-polar part and a more polar phosphate part. With the uranyl ion and the plutonium 4 plus ion, it forms a complex that looks something like this. In this case, it's the uranyl ion. This way, uranium and plutonium and minimal amounts of neptunium and also technetium can be extracted from the aqueous phase. Yes, concentrated nitric acid is considered an aqueous phase. Into the non-polar kerosene phase. Everything else, fission products and actinides remain in the aqueous phase and then can be drained off. Subsequently, a large portion of the uranyl and plutonium can be extracted with water from this now fission product free solution. You can't get all of it out of the TBP, but a lot of it. And that can be used to make, for example, MOX, mix oxide fuels. Or in our case, it's just to have pure uranium nitrate again, which can be used for further uranium chemistry. So just to be clear, why are we doing this in our lab? Well, in our lab, uranium nitrate is the best precursor for uranium chemistry. And the uranium chemistry involves slapping on some organic ligands and other metals and stuff like that. And then you can collect the waste, dissolve this in concentrated nitric acid, which will oxidize all of the organic ligands, mostly to CO2. And anything else that isn't oxidized into oblivion stays in the solution and only the uranium can be complexed by the TBP and then can be separated from all the other metals, for example, like iron and cobalt and whatever they used during their chemistry. The uranium can then be converted back into uranium nitrate and all of the other metals they go into the normal waste bin. And it makes sense to recycle the uranium nitrate because uranium nitrate itself is quite expensive and the disposal is even more expensive. So we just recycle it over and over again. I've already prepared something here, namely the material to be reprocessed. So it's uranium nitrate, but it's not pure enough to be used for synthesis. I made a saturated solution with half concentrated nitric acid. Prepared in a separatory funnel is already used TBP kerosene solution. You add about the same volume of uranium solution, put the stopper on and immediately do a pressure equalization. Shaking now would be a very bad idea because especially when nitric acid contacts the TBP phase, a lot of gas is produced. So at first be very careful. Pressure, concentrated nitric acid and uranium, that's not a cool combination. Then shake it and continuously do a pressure release. And after the third pressure release, it stabilizes. But better safe than sorry in this case, it doesn't hurt. Once done, the stopper can be removed and wait for the phase separation. The aqueous phase is at the bottom, which obviously contains still a lot of uranium. But the TBP phase is now noticeably darker. So it's now saturated with urinal. We have a lot of urinal TBP complexes there compared to before. So definitely darker and the dirty urinal solution is now drained into a separate container. This will be run through the TBP again later. And now normal distilled water is added. Here not a one-to-one -one by volume, but little water, but more frequently. 
So about seven times adding a bit water, shaking, water, shaking, water, shaking. I've done that now. A little water shake drain the urinal containing water into a beaker in the background to boil it down and so on until the TBP becomes noticeably paler. And the water too. You can see quite well how the water becomes paler with each pass. This means we're getting a lot of urinal out of the TBP complex into the water phase which then can be boiled down. Then again the TBP has to be saturated with uranium again. So I added the dirty saturated nitric acid urinal solution again. Careful, equalize the pressure, drain the nitric acid phase and water back to the TBP. You get the point, so on and so on. After I processed the saturated solution of camera over the next two days, I finally was able to scribe out the rest as saturated and aqueous solution as possible and a little bit of concentrated nitric acid was added. Yes, a certain part was yellow and is still radioactive, but simply it didn't want to dissolve. To be honest, that was safe for the next time. And this is what it looks like behind the scenes. But Simon, where's the green lab coat from the nuclear chemistry and where's your personal dosimeter? This happens in a different working group. Here we are only working with natural uranium compounds. So this lab doesn't fall under the radiation protection regulations. So no airlock or exclusive code or whatever. So this was all a practice run with a less dirty urinal solution. And now for the final disgusting soup. You can see there is a good amount of uranium in there. All dissolved in concentrated nitric acid. Yeah, let's see if this can be purified. On the right is now the concentrated nitric acid phase. And looking at the color after shaking with water, not much is coming out. I ran the whole container through the TBP three times and I must say that the TBP became unusable over time due to this sludge that was in the waste container. The phases didn't separate out and I had to use new TBP solution. And the amount of uranium you got out of it for this much effort is just not worth it. I've been boiling down the extracted egg with urinal nitrate solution the whole time. I filter it again because I prefer higher purity in this case. And while it was filtrating, I tried to shake out the remaining urinal out of the TBP so that the next person that can be easily saturated with more uranium. Why do I not use vacuum filtration? Devices that can be contaminated with uranium are in short supply in this lab. Once everything is done, the workplace is of course checked again for contamination. You can see quite well that there was some activity on the papers here and there and everything is cleaned up, packed in gloves and checked again. Naturally the highly concentrated urinal nitrate solution should be put away. And I've boiled it down even further until the urinal nitrate crystallized even in the heat. And this very concentrated solution is now stored with silica gel in a desiccator so that the urinal nitrate crystallizes out over the next few weeks. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.